Hey and howdy howdy and hi, this is gonna be a really quick intro, thanks for dropping by. Hello everybody, I am very tired. It's been a long week, it's been a very, very productive week. I've been working on a lot of different projects that I cannot name right now, um, but I'm hoping that you guys will enjoy them when they get rolled out. But first, 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 finishing up Cold to the Lamb. If you haven't seen my playthroughs for Cult of the Lamb, I would really recommend it. It was a really fun game and I really, really enjoyed it, but I'll get into it during the video because this is kind of going to be a speed paint review of the game of sorts. Um, I review it and I draw it because I really enjoyed it. Other than that, I'm hoping you guys enjoy this because I had a lot of fun with the game and honestly, it's one of my favorites so far of the year. Um, but other than that, I have a few things that I've been working on. I put up a poll because I finally got access to the community posts. Um, and I saw you guys' answers. And guess what? One of the videos I'm currently working on right now is the D&D character speed paint. So I'm hoping to get that out soon. But I do have a surprise video before that. But don't worry, don't worry. I'm still working on the other stuff that you guys did vote for. But yeah, other than that, let's get started with the video. Thank you so much for sticking through this. And um, yeah, hope you enjoy it. Bye-bye. All right, let's get started with the speed paint. I am very excited for this one. This is very different from what I've done before for my speed paints. I usually don't do backgrounds or full illustrations like this. Um, I've done a few in the past, kind of in, in the style of having a background or having some sort of atmosphere to it. I believe those ones might have been my Oxen Free speed paint and my Ganyu speed paint for Genshin Impact. But other than that, I don't usually do full illustrations like this too often. I like to focus on more character designs, but for Cult of the Lamb, I really wanted to capture that, that cult atmosphere that really makes the game so charming because it's just so insane. <laughs> If you guys haven't seen my Cult of the Lamb playthrough, or if you haven't seen Cult of the Lamb stuff at all, I would highly recommend checking out this game. It is an amazing game and I absolutely adored it. It was adorable, but spooky if you really like that kind of thing. You know, the games that trick you that, that are just like, hey, this game's uh, not made for, for young audiences. And then you're like, oh, but why? It, it looks so cute. And then you get nightmares for the next two weeks um, because of the content. Uh, thank you, DDLC. But yeah, no, if you enjoy that kind of cute but horrifying art style, you would definitely like Cult of the Lamb. Or if you like roguelites, um, it's not too in-depth on the roguelite aspect, but it's still enough to get beginners into roguelites, if you know what I mean. Like, it's nothing insane like The Binding of Isaac or Hades or Hades, or I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce it half the time. Is it Hades or Hades? I think it's Hades. It's nothing too crazy like Binding of Isaac or Hades. But either way, I would still re re ugh, can't talk today. I would still recommend it if you're looking to get into roguelites because it's still, <laughs> it's still insane. Um, but yeah, if you couldn't already tell, I'm slightly reviewing this game while I am drawing. Um, just kind of mixing a two in one, making it bit more interesting for a review but other than that I guess I would give the game like five out of five honestly I really enjoyed it it was so fun it was a bit frustrating at some points I'm still trying to get all the achievements um it's it's going great I'm only missing two but yeah I would highly recommend it if you're looking to get into roguelites it's a very kind of like easier roguelite than the two I did mention. Those ones are- those ones go a bit ham. But this one's a good stepping point if you're looking to get into the genre. Um, but yeah, and for those of you who really like cute but horrifying games, this is also another must-have that I would highly recommend. Um, like I mentioned before, it doesn't go too deep into the roguelite, and but what I mean by that is that the dungeons aren't endless, if- if that makes sense. The dungeons have more of a set kind of maps and they don't keep tossing you into the rooms instead you can leave after a certain amount of time you can choose to keep going if you want but if you just fight a mini boss honestly you can just go back to your to your base and to like recover and get all your stuff back and i think the reason why it's so light on the roguelite aspects is because it's also kind of like a life sim because you build a cult um during the game you can assemble your cult and grow it and make it just really big and you can have a huge following 
but you also have to take care of your, your cult members. You know, kind of like The Sims, except if you could um, make your Sims eat poop. I'm not kidding. <laughs> I don't know how many followers have asked me to eat poop. It's too many. It's it's too many. I I don't know why there's an obsession with poop. But um yeah. Like I said, this game is really weird. Um but I love it. Even though my followers ask me to eat bowls of poop or uh they ask me to prank another follower by making them eat a bowl of poop and then subsequently asking me to murder same same follower as a prank. It's just a prank, bro. But yeah. Other than that, it's such a it's such a good game. I'm I'm at a loss for words, but at the same time, I've got too many words. The boss fights are very different, but also frustrating. Um, at least for for the last few bosses, I have difficulty with Kalamar and Shimura. Still, I still haven't beaten them without getting hit because of their projectiles. But other than that, the replayability, I would say it's pretty good, especially if you choose different choices. Um, cause you can choose different options for your cult. There, um, are the doctrines, so they affect how you play. So if you want to be a, a merciful cult leader, or if you want to be a mean cult leader, you have different doctrines to do that. So I think you could replay the game quite a few times depending on what doctrines that you choose. I tried to be the nicest that I could. Um, I, I will admit though, I still ended up sacrificing a few followers. My bad. But other than that... Um, yeah, I'd say there's quite a few options for replayability. There was quite a few hidden, like, quests and stuff to find. If I wanted to get all the fleeces, there was quite a few, like, hidden people that I would have to do quests for. Um, there's actually some stuff that gets affected by how you play the game. Um, and I found that really interesting, because some of them, I didn't even run into them until late in the game. And for some of them, they're in the dungeons. Like, you have to go into the dungeons, and sometimes you have to do different things. Like, for the shrimp guy, um, you run into him, and I didn't expect that you could fight him. You... I, I'm just still thinking about it, because it was so funny, because I literally kept running into this guy, and not once did it occur to me, I can just smack his snail wife, and then he'll get mad at me and try to beat me up. You know, which would be understandable because I hit his snail wife. Which, by the way, I didn't know that the rainbow, the rainbow shrimp was a rainbow shrimp. I thought he was a caterpillar. All right, I had to look onto that guy's wiki. He was, he, he's a shrimp. A shrimp married to a snail. Listen, this game is, is, is weird, but I still love it. But yeah, there's a lot of hidden stuff that you can find. Honestly, I found that really funny. I was actually looking for some of this stuff. Um, I will say, lore-wise, you do have to watch out if you want lore. This game isn't too heavy lore-wise. There, there's a like a minimum amount of story because you mainly go through fighting all the bishops. Um, I would have loved for them to build more into the world, which I'm hoping for the new updates for this game they will go into because I'm really intrigued by how the bishops do work, especially because for the um, the owl lady, um, Haro, Haro does have a crown, and I was curious about it because the bishops have crowns, but, you know, they're the bishops. But the thing is, Haro does have a crown, but hers has an X on it. I was really curious about Haro. I wanted to know about her and her place in all this that's going on. Um, so I wish they kind of developed further into some of the NPCs and built up more on why the world functions the way it does. But I'm gonna guess that in the future updates, because they are planning a major update for this game, um, that they build more into that, which I'm very excited for, because I, I wanted more lore, even though in my videos I did sound gripey about the lore, but I do love lore. I really want to know what's going on in this game. Um, so that's the only point I would have a gripe for. Just more lore. I want to know what's going on. Why Why are things like this? But other than that, I don't really have too many gripes. The, the only other thing I can think of is that I really wish that you had more ways to get different weapons. The only weapon that I really like to use is the axe, because it's like the median between all of the weapons. Does enough damage, and it's fast enough for me. I wish there was more ways to get the axe or a certain curse. Like, if you completed the game, you could just choose them at will. But for some players, I, I will admit that some people might not enjoy that. Like, some people enjoy the predictability, the unpredictability. But for me, I just want my, my own, my weapon that I prefer. 
but yeah, other than that five out of five game, I completely enjoyed it. I absolutely adored it. The art style is amazing. The gameplay is very fun. Um, and I would really recommend it for anyone, especially if you enjoy poop humor. Um, but yeah, other than that, I had a lot of fun with it. And I, again, would really recommend this game to anyone who is slightly interested in it. If, you, if you've been meaning to play it, just do it. Because it... It's just one of those games that you pick it up and it's really hard to put down. But yeah, um, I'm trying to figure out what to say next because uh, the speed paint's almost over. Um, and I really enjoyed drawing this, honestly. It's, it was a very nice change of pace and I'm actually planning on doing another Cult of the Lamb speed paint in the future. Because I had another idea for what I could do. But that's in the future. This is now. Um, I have a few other things that I'm working on, and I'm honestly pretty excited for all of them. So thank you guys so much for sticking around, and for those of you who saw the Cult of the Lamb um, playthroughs that I did, thank you so much. And I'm so sorry to headphone users. <laughs> I'm so sorry, you guys. I kept forgetting to put the warnings in those videos. So my condolences. I, I will put them in future videos from now on, because I'm a very loud person, and I'm so sorry.